Hello everyone and welcome back to my channel. I am Alice and in today's video I want to share with you the six most wearable and timeless trends of autumn 2024. Now if you know me you know that I'm all about building a curated and timeless wardrobe and generally speaking trends are not really a big part of it because by their very nature trends are meant to pass not to stay. However I think that these autumns we're saying quite a lot of uh, trends that are not only practical and wearable for normal people but also quite timeless. So if you want to inject some more of trendiness to your wardrobe to make it a little bit more current, I think that these are good trend to, if not invest, at least to try out. Of course as always though, style is personal, lifestyle as well, so you need to apply everything to your own personal life and lifestyle. My first choice is the visible and high socks. Now, this might be slightly surprising because admittedly this is not the most timeless of trends and in fact this is the least timeless of my list. However, the reason why I included it is because this is very cheap and very easy because it sucks after all. You find them everywhere, they are very cheap and if the trend passes you can wear them like your regular socks under your pants instead of making them visible. So there is really no waste involved, neither in terms of resources or money. The reason why I wanted to highlight this first is because when we talk about timeless trends we always talk about trends that are going to stay here for a very long time. However, I think that when you have a trend that is so easy to incorporate in your style like the socks and it's very cheap, it's not going to break the bank and it's not going to involve any waste on the long run, I don't think there is anything wrong with playing with it. The only thing I would tell you to be careful with the socks is the length. And that's because it's exactly like finding the right skirt length. You need to find the length that you find it personally flattering for your own legs. So for someone it might be the ankle socks, for someone else it might be the knee high socks, it doesn't matter as long as you find it flattering. And if you want to try these trends but you want to be a little bit uh, more subtle, a very easy way is to find a pair of socks that matches in color the color of your shoes so that you're still making it visible but it's a little bit more subtle. My second choice is the denim on denim trend. I think that this is a very fun take on the whole denim spiel and again it's going to be a quite easy and cheap trend to replicate because we all tend to have a lot of denim already at home so chances are that you're going to be able to do this trend without even having to buy anything new. I am not a trendy person in the slightest and even I would be able to do this trend without having to buy anything new. So I think this is a safe one again, especially because what's really trendy here is to use the denim with denim. But denim per se is not a trend. It has been here for a very long time, it's going to stay here for a very long time. So if the trend passes or you get bored with it, you can simply keep on wearing your denim items separately instead of together. Number three is the nod to the countryside style. Now, this comes with no surprise, but this is my favorite trend of all, and that's because this is not a trend for me. This is how I dress on a daily basis. However, regardless of my own personal preferences, I would still feel confident in recommending it for two reasons. Number one, it is extremely practical. This is a style that was created to withstand mother rain, so it's perfect for this season. And number two, I think it's quite timeless because yes, up until now, it was more of a niche trend, more of a niche style rather, but it has always been quite consistent through the years and you will always look cool and elegant with a nice countryside look and I can say that with a certain degree of certainty because as I said this is my style and I've been dressing like this way before this became a trend and I keep receiving compliments for my clothing again even before this became a trend. So it's a safe one to play with. The only thing that uh, I would say it's quite tricky with this trend is that unless you live in the countryside it can become a little bit costumey. If you, like me, live in a city, yeah, it could be a bit difficult to pull off. So what I do um, to make it work is I basically apply the same logic of Chanel for jewelry to my style. So I get dressed and then I remove something. And this is normally enough to make it less like a cosplay and more like I'm actually getting dressed to go to work. Next, we have the nod to the corporate or office environment. Now this honestly made me laugh because where is the trend here? I mean, if you work in an office, chances are you're already dressed in this way. And even if you don't work in an office, I would say that suits, blazer and trousers have always been around. So I honestly don't think that this is really a trend. 
At the same time, this also means that this is quite a safe one to play with because it's not going to pass easily. And as always, when you have matching sets, uh, you can use the items together or you can use them separately. So with just two items, you can really create a lot of outfits. However, I would say that if you are someone that is, uh, again, does not work in an office and works in an environment in which having a full-on suit might be a little bit weird, or um, you just never wore these kind of items and you feel a little bit unsure, as always, play little, play safe, at least at the beginning. Try to test the, the, the trend out, see if it works for you, and then in case, invest on something bigger. In this case, it could be something as simple as wearing a white crisp short and maybe wearing a tie with your regular clothes and see how you feel about it and if you actually like to wear it. Next, we have the oversized jacket. This is not necessarily a trend for me, but I think it is pretty timeless. It can also be very practical because you can layer up underneath your jacket so you can be warm, you can stretch it more into winter. And also, I think it's quite an easy and cheap trend to replicate again. Yes, it is true that jackets tend to be more on the expensive side, but you can simply recreate or at least test out this trend by asking a friend who is taller than you to lend you one of their jackets. And you can try it out, see how it works, because their jacket is automatically going to look oversized on you. This is what I did to understand that this is not a trend for me. I asked my husband to lend me his denim jacket. I tried it out. Not really my thing. I didn't buy one. If I really feel like I want to be a little bit more edgy, I just ask him to lend me his jacket again. And that's it. Next, we have the colors of the season. Now, tying in with the whole countryside spiel, the colors of the seasons are khaki, burgundy, and chocolate brown. Now, I honestly think that these are the classic colors that will be more or less in style depending on the years, but you're never really going to look out of fashion wearing these colors, especially not in autumn. So if they resonate with you, if you like them, if they're part of your color palette, feel absolutely confident in uh, adding them to your wardrobe or adding more of them. Last but not least, we have the leopard print. Now, I know that this is not for everyone. Definitely, it is not for me. However, if you really love it, I think that it's a very safe and cool trend to tap into because, again, you're never going to look wrong. You're never going to look out of fashion wearing a leopard print. And because it's something that has been here for such a long time, chances are that you can find beautiful leopard printed items second hand for a fraction of the price. I know that a lot of people are worried of looking a little bit tacky. Um, I disagree with it. I don't think the leopard print is tacky at all. I think it all depends on how you're going to style it. Now, I'd say that for most people, not only leopard print, print in general, it's difficult to overlap prints unless you have a very cool sense of style, unless you have the personality that goes with it, like think at Iris Upwell. Otherwise, for more, I would say, everyday people, it's a little bit more difficult. So how you do it, you simply wear one item at a time and you keep everything else as neutral and muted as possible and you can create very beautiful items. And keep in mind that your one item doesn't need to be something small. You can go ahead and have a beautiful long leopard printed coat and uh, if everything else is, let's say, black, you're going to look absolutely chic and fantastic. And to reiterate, it's not that you can't overlap prints or leopard prints specifically, it's just that it's more difficult for people to do that. So if you want to play safe, this is the easy way in which you can play safe. But if you like the trend, but leopard is not really your thing, I get you covered because I have the same problem. So this is what I have for you. This is actually an old uh, dress, but works perfectly with this trend because as you can see, this is actually a leopard print. However, uh, because this is a lot smaller, when you put it from a, oop, when you put it from a side, it's not really visible. Plus, it's black and white, so it's a lot more subtle, and it's much more in my color scheme. Brown is really not my color. Um, this is much better for me, and to be honest, it's just more subtle. I'm not a huge print person. Thank you so much for watching. I hope you enjoyed this video. If you did, please give it a thumbs up and maybe subscribe to my channel. I would absolutely love to see you back. And until next time, bye!